Now we start with our brand new interview with Sakir Starmer and an angry Sakir has said that his father would be turning in his grave at the way that many members of the audience in a televised election event yesterday evening laughed when he said that he had worked in a factory. Now Sakir's father passed away in 2018. Now the Labour leader has been speaking to our political editor Chris Hope. Keir Starmer, is it a risk going to an election saying you're going to increase people's taxes in a cost-of-living crisis? We have been very clear that for working people, we are not going to increase their taxes. So that means we are not increasing income tax, mm -hmm. national insurance or VAT. And that is because I think the burden on working people is too high. Uh, the tax burden under this government is at a 70-year high. And that is why our plans are fully costed, fully funded. They do not involve tax rises over and above the ones that we've set out in relation to non-DOM status, mm. private equity, loopholes, VAT on private schools, and of course, a windfall tax on oil and gas mm. companies. So they're the rises we will put in place, um, but we have not announced today anything over and above what we've pre-announced. Uh, so none of the plans mm. today in our manifesto for growth, for wealth creation, uh, require us to raise other taxes. But you're still raising taxes and the Tories are cutting it. It's quite a clear line there for voters, isn't it? Well, the Tories aren't cutting tax. They've raised it to the highest level for <laughs> 70 years. They say they're going to cut tax, uh, but they haven't told us how they're going to fund it. Mm. That is the mistake that Liz Truss made. Mm. Uh, Rishi Sunak was supposed to be the sort of guy who came and stabilised after Liz Truss, and now he's repeating the mistake. And the reason that matters is not just the political to and fro of a campaign, because working people pay the price. People are today paying more on their mortgage because of what the Tories mm. did to the economy. Rishi Sunak's going to do the same all over again. People can't afford that. When you say cutting taxes for the work for working people, what is your typical working person who might receive tax cuts in the Labour government? Well, everybody who's earning an income and paying income tax, paying national insurance mm. um, and paying VAT. So those that are, as it were, subject to those three There's Most taxes, people, then. Uh, well, working people, not, mm. not everybody, okay. but working mm. people, yes. Mm. You say there's no increase in, in, in those areas, but you don't mention wealth taxes, capital gains tax. S some say you're going to double that. Is well, that the plan? The whole point of our manifesto is a manifesto for growth, for wealth, wealth, wealth creation. Um, everything fully costed, fully funded. This is the complete opposite of the Tory party manifesto, I grant you that. Mm. But we've set out, therefore, what it will cost, what it, the funding is. And as you go through it, as you have done all undoubtedly, yeah, yes. Uh, you will see that there are no tax rises needed for the plans that we intend to put in place. And I understand why you know, all of the questions in this campaign so far have been about tax and spend. I reject the argument that that's the only way you can actually take our country forward. Mm. Our plan is for growth, for wealth creation, mm. uh, for the simple reason that if we had growth in the last 14 years under this government, at the same rate as we did under the last Labour government, we'd have tens of billions of pounds for our public services without raising And if tax. growth doesn't happen, like it's not at the moment, well, no. then what? I reject this proposition that's put to me that um, we've had a lousy 14 years where growth has been basically flatlined and our public services have fallen into uh, disarray, that nothing can ever get better, none of this can change, that that's our fate for the future. This is a change election confidently put forward a plan which is you know, four years in the making, lots of engagement with business and others who will deliver it with us, uh, changing the planning rules, setting up a national wealth fund, setting up GB Energy, getting our waiting list down. These are structural changes that will bring about the growth that we need. This is a change election and we're going to turn our back on this sort of defeatism that <laughs> okay. nothing can get better in this country. I do not accept that. On migration, you very kindly asked yeah. a question in, in that press conference. I did ask you, what, what's your figure? You want to reduce net migration to what? You wouldn't give a figure. Is it tens of thousands? I want it to come down substantially. I'm not going to put an arbitrary figure on it. Uh, that's been done in pretty well every Conservative manifesto yeah. for the last few elections. And the one thing that is common in those manifestos is the number has never been hit. Mm. So I'm not going to put an arbitrary figure. I'm going to say the numbers need to come down. They need to come down substantially. They're way higher mm. now uh, than they've been ever before. Mm. Um, they need to come down. The way to bring them down is to... Uh, make sure that the underlying drivers, such as the skills crisis yeah. in the country, is dealt with. So that's what we will do. On Brexit, you say no return to single market, customs union, um, but you want to be a leading nation in Europe again. What does that mean? Is that for some form of backdoor entry? 
It means a better deal than the botch deal we've got with the EU, which isn't really working mm. for anyone. So that's improved trading relations, so it makes it easier to trade for our businesses. That'll be very well received. I also want us to work more closely on research and development and education. And the other area that's very important is defence and security, which in, you know, mm. in light of what's happened in Ukraine is yes. obviously a very pressing issue. And I think that we can have a closer alignment there. And not undermine NATO by doing that. No, no, no. Um, because NATO, NATO might think that's, that's what we do. I've talked to NATO about this and yeah. how uh, we would work both in NATO and with um, you know, improvements in security across Europe. I think they would welcome that. Mm -hmm. um, we have a very big contribution to make when it comes to defence and security as the UK. Mm. Looking at last night's debate with, with Sky News, the crowd laughed when he said, your dad's a toolmaker. Why is that? Do you think people, you've got nothing more to say, are they getting tired of this, the same same comment. Let me directly <laughs> um, address you on that. My dad worked in a factory all his life. Mm. He felt people disrespected him. Oh. Um, and I'm not, he, no, no, that's no, no, not no, happening with no, the laughing. No, no, I, just, I do want to see this through because it, it actually hit a nerve last night. Yeah. Because he felt that uh, in the usual conversation when someone says, what do you do for a living, when mm -hmm. socially, he would say, I work in a factory. And there'd be a pause where nobody quite knew what to say. And he felt really disrespected. It caused him in his life to withdraw from social engagements. He didn't do it much later in life because it was raw to him that he should be disrespected because he worked in a factory. So when someone laughed last night, mm. my dad would have turned in his grave. Is that, was that a bit of snobbishness towards your dad? Do you think? I don't know what caused someone to laugh. No. But if you're laughing at someone because they work in a factory, yeah. then that is the one thing that... I think, had a massive impact on someone yeah. like my dad, the disrespect. And it's in me. You can see I'm angry about it. You are I'm angry. frustrated. Yeah. Because I will never allow that sort of disrespect for working no. people uh, to be any part of my plans, any part of the Britain that I want as the future. So I will proudly tell anybody who will listen that my dad uh, worked in a factory. He was a tool maker, a very good tool maker. He loved his trade. Uh, my mum was a nurse. And she loved being a nurse. And we didn't have a lot of money. Um, and I'm proud of what my parents did. Um, and yes, I don't like it when people laugh at my dad mm. because he worked in a factory. Quite right. Finally, Vic's not here. Well, uh, the PM's wife was there on Tuesday. Does she not like campaigning? And there's a rumour that she's not. She's di di disappeared. She's, sh she's not there anymore. I mean, what, 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 not, not literally, but where is she? She was working. Yesterday. Oh, she's working. Okay. The, so she's, she works in the NHS. Okay. Uh, but she's, she's happy about school. your campaigning. Happy about you becoming prime minister. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. And she's getting on with the job that she's got in the NHS, and that works okay. very well for us. Uh, we've also got two children. Of course, and she's doing a fantastic job with them as well. Okay, you're fully behind you. Of course, of course. Thank you. Kiss that. Thank you. Well, that was a superb interview, and let's speak now with the man who did it, and that's our political editor, Chris Hope. Chris, welcome to the show. A very insightful, very revealing interview there. And can we start on that point of my dad would have turned in his grave? Do you still think, actually, that Sikir Starmer is missing the point here? People aren't laughing at his father. They're not laughing at the laudable, noble job of working in a factory. They're actually laughing at the fact he keeps telling everybody about it all the time. Isn't that the point? Hi, Martin. Yeah, welcome to Manchester, where shortly we'll be going and looking into uh, more TV debates tonight, a seven-way debate involving uh, spokespeople for the main parties and then Nigel Farage and others for the, more, the smaller parties. But, yeah, in that interview, um, when I asked the question, I, I thought you might understand, I think, that people are just... They get, they're familiar with the toolmaker line, his dad worked in a factory. But, no, it's not the case at all for him. He takes it extremely personally, and he says... And who's to, who's to argue with him? He, it's his lived experience of people mocking his dad who worked in a factory, his dad being embarrassed to say he worked in a factory and, and almost retreating into himself in the back end of his life. And he thinks it's really upsetting and frustrating. And he says, he says in terms there that people in that new audience in Sky News last night were mocking his dad for working in a factory. I think that's quite telling. Whatever you say, Martin, we're journalists... We, we're used to the, the, the familiar patter from these politicians, but an audience who isn't maybe that engaged with politics, um, and he felt they were, they were laughing at someone working in a factory, and he spoke mm. out about that.
Can I quickly ask you um, about your question on immigration targets? Because people want to see detail. We're five minutes to midnight. We're staring down the barrel of an incoming government. We want to know some actual concrete numbers. Chris, you tried your best. You still didn't get any detail out of Sakir Starmer. That's right, Martin. Well, here's the, here's the uh, manifesto. Um, page 41, Labour will reduce net migration. It says it in terms on page 41, and I did it on behalf of you and the viewers and listeners. What does that mean? To what is the answer? Reduce net migration to what? He wouldn't say and didn't say. And I also asked Yvette Cooper in the aftermath of that speech earlier by Keir Starmer at the headquarters of the Cooperative uh, Society when he, he or she also wouldn't say it. They know that that number, that tens of thousands number that the Tories first produced back in 2010 has been used to beat them up repeatedly over four governments and they're not going to make the same mistake. The problem is, I think, there's a the lack of trust, I think, amongst our governing class from people who are concerned, and lots of more GB News viewers and listeners, they are concerned about uh, uh, migration figures and they look at the ruling class and wonder, don't you get it? Mm. Give us a figure and let's judge you by that. But even Labour won't do that. Well, thank you, Chris, for holding Sakir Starmer to account on behalf of GB News viewers and my show. Thank you very much. Always a pleasure to speak to you soon, my friend. Excellent stuff. Let's get more reaction to what Sakir Starmer said. And I'm joined in the studio by Mark Littlewood, who's the director of the Popular Conservatives. Mark, welcome to the studio. You were making notes profusely there on the economic detail, the taxation detail of Sir Keir Starmer's manifesto. Share it with us, please. Yeah, it, I mean, it's, it's quite extraordinary, really, isn't it? You, you would think, uh, I mean, I'm not politically sympathetic to Keir Starmer. He's, he, you would think that he would actually have a plan for growth. That's what he says. He wants to bring stability and growth. This seems to be Keir Starmer's analysis of the past decade or so. Credit has been insufficiently cheap. He's complaining about mortgage rates being as high as they are. We have had unbelievably low interest rates, mm. ludicrously low interest rates for 15 years now, getting drunk on cheap credit. Presumably he wants to go back to that. He's worried that interest rates are too high. He criticises the Conservatives that the tax rate, the tax burden is the highest since the 1940s. He is correct, uh, objectively, in that fact. He thinks taxes aren't high enough. It's not high enough for them to be at this level. We need to dial them up a bit more. He didn't mention much about regulation, but we've heard announcements from the Labour Party. They want more advertising bans and all of the rest of it. We get new regulations every day. We've had that disappointingly under a Conservative regime. Keir Starmer thinks the, com the, the country is still regulated too little. So his recipe for growth seems to be to go back to cheap credit, to dial up taxes even higher, even the, the highest since the Second World War, for the state to spend even more money and have even more control over the economy, and for regulations to continue to grow. Uh, I would be very surprised if that brings about boost to GDP in the UK economy. And yet, he said, almost like Del Boy, nothing on the income tax, no VAT, no money back, no guarantee. <laughs> Is there a danger here, Mark? People are saying that there's not a lot in this in terms of detail, nothing to spook for horses, but with that supermajority that even Grant Shapps is talking about, could there then be an unstoppable majority to really ratchet up tax increases down the line? I think that's right. And the, the odd game that politicians play to try and swerve the very fair questions of people like Chris Hope is they rule out an income tax hike, a VAT hike or something. But there are a million ways in which you can increase the tax burden. So I think GB News viewers should be keeping an eye on one thing. What's the total proportion of national income that the government is hoovering up in tax? Mm. That is at a 70, 80 year high. Uh, Keir Starmer wants that to go even higher. To my disappointment, it will probably dial up a little bit if the Conservatives are uh, re-elected, unlikely though that seems. It will dial up a lot more if Labour is re-elected. They will stick to these particular pledges, but keep your eyes open for capital gains tax, playing around with the thresholds on income tax, introducing new rates. You know what, Martin, it reminds me a little bit of George Bush Sr., who made a pledge before he was elected president in 1988, read my lips, no new taxes. Mm. Taxes then went up, and some Republicans dared to say, these aren't new taxes, these are just old taxes going up. That's definitely what we'll face under a Labour government, probably to quite an extent.